Hello there, this is Chris with Peace of Mind Arts and Crafts. And today I'm coming to you with a short tutorial on how to make um, a piece of ephemera for your journal. This one is um, using two envelopes. It's an envelope fold. It's been done many times before, I'm sure, on, uh, on other channels. And uh, as a matter of fact, that's how I learned to make it. And you can make these envelopes in, in lots of different combinations. This one opens up. It's decorated on both sides. And opens up to provide a place for other journaling cards or papers. Okay. What you need for this is two envelopes. These that I've used are tea dyed and your envelopes can be any size. I'm going to work with this size today and I'm going to show you how to how to make this project. These are tea dyed. My first step is going to be to take the first envelope, lay it so the flap is open, and what you're going to do is you're going to glue the flap on the inside of the envelope. It's a little bit tricky. What you want to do for the first part is, I'm using a glue stick because that way I won't get any on the um, on the envelope edges as I go in, which may cause it to stick to itself and close the opening. We don't really want to do that. So I'm using my I'm using a glue book and a glue stick. Okay, and I want to open it out and Fairly quickly glue this envelope down in there. Glue stick does not does not last too long as far as the stickiness and needs to be glued down fairly quickly. We have to do a little maneuvering to get it in there. Then get down in there and adhere it down. Rub with your fingers. And your next step is to put your other envelope in. Now this envelope is going to go in this direction. Okay, and what it's going to do is it's going to have the the uh, the flap glue down so that it's sitting on the inside. So you're going to want to be able to fold it here. So in order to glue it, you need to take it out first. You'll be gluing on this side, the outside part of the envelope. I'm using a Elmer's glue stick. You can use any kind you want. I've used Yoohoo glue sticks also, which work well. This just happened to be what I had. Okay, my glue's on. And once again, I'm going to put these these two envelopes face the, with the uh, openings facing each other. And I'm going to slide this in. You notice on both of these sides that the butt comes to the envelope. And go in with your hands and glue it down best you can. Make sure that you're able to still fold the envelope over. It's okay if you've got a little bit of white showing here. We'll uh, uh, give that some inking later on and that'll cover up that, that whiter area or the lighter area. Okay, next step, 
because I probably want to decorate the inside. Um, I don't want to put too many, too much on it. What I did on this one was I stenciled onto the, the sides of the envelope. The, um, the tea dyeing on this one provided a lot of the, the color. So that's, I'm going to show you how I did that. Use any stencil you want. Um, kind of like these tag stencils. Start over here. Hope everyone's doing well today. It's a snowy day here in Colorado again. We've gotten so much snow. I'm use my distressed oxide vintage photo ink pad. And I'm using this uh, this brush. It's kind of like a makeup brush. Okay, what I'm going to do is stencil these tags, or well, the outline of these tags, onto the inside of this envelope. You can add other things if you want. Dipping it in there. You can use any different color as inks on here too if you want. If you're doing a Christmas one, you could use a, a Christmassy stencil. Okay, let me take that off. That's how it looks. We could put let's put another one over here on this side. We'll use this smaller one again, the thinner one. See if I'm in frame here. I think so. Okay. I could do the inside of these flaps too if I want. That'll probably have you know, a fairly large paper coming out to there, so I wouldn't have to if I didn't didn't want to. Um, I think on this one, I think I might have the the tags going in the opposite direction. If I wanted to, I could write things inside these tags, journal on there. I kind of like this this water or tea mark I should say watermark caused by the tea let's see let's try this pretty scallopy one up has that pretty scallop up on the top I'm not paying too much mind to whether or not these are exactly straight down. I could even overlap them if I wanted to. Um, I think I'll put one in here as well. the front and back cover would be good uh, before I do that I think I'm going to go around the edges of the envelopes If you feel like um, 
these flaps are getting in your way, um, I would go ahead and glue them down now. I think I'm going to do that. I use a little bit of this um, glitter glue. I don't want to go too close to the inside there because I don't want to um, glue that inside out part of the envelope down because I want to be able to put some papers in there. Sorry about that. Also, this is kind of in the way. Keeps flopping up. This one as well. Let's get these down so they don't get tattered, tattered and torn. And that way you still have still have a, a fairly good space to put your other ephemera in there, tags or papers. Okay. Now it doesn't matter, well, because of the way I stamped it, it doesn't matter which way it goes. You could use either side for the back or the front. But you might want to determine that before you before you decide what to stamp on here in, in the inside in case it's a design that just goes one way. Okay, let's decorate the outside. And I can stencil on there as well. Or I can stamp, I think I'm going to stamp on this one. Okay, this is my, it's my top, my bottom. Oh, by the way, the stencil that I used was American Mixed Media Stencil. And I got it at, at um, oh, now I can't think of the name of it. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. I get a lot of my um, art supplies and mixed media supplies and scrapbooking and journaling supplies at Tuesday morning. It's really a great place that has... Well, it lists the comparative value at four dollars, and then they they are selling it for a dollar forty nine. What Tuesday morning is is a store that sells uh, um, prior season merchandise. So, you know, it's maybe out of style a little bit or whatever. No longer is selling at the other stores. They may have introduced new designs, that kind of thing. But I found some really good buys there. Okay, let's do some stamping. I have my script stamp here, which I use a lot for backgrounds. And I can go any direction with this. the side of the page and I can always add some more on later if I once I get the the front and back covered with other items okay I do have a um Dragonfly stamp here. Um, it's usually a better idea to um, to wait until the end to stamp something like this because you don't know what you're going to put over it. But I'll just show you. Just do a, a few um, a few of the dragonflies there, and then maybe we'll do one or two when we're done. 
with the uh, other design. Uh, for the front, I've selected a print of one of my art quilts. This particular one was done with uh, with uh, fabric. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of fussy cut around a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I can't go far down because I I had a notepad printed on it. That's what it what it was for. I mean, I had it printed on a notepad. Okay, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I thought I'd try to use this. It's something I love to this design, the colors of these these flowers. Okay, I think I might need something um, in back of that. Let me see what I've got here. Got some got some papers. These are from my porch prints. I just went to uh, the my porch prints site on Etsy. Oh. By the way, these uh, digitals that I used on this one were from Artie Mays. Um, this, the, march, the little mushrooms were free digital and the other were from um, a summer a summer digital that was like, I can't remember how many, probably five or six sheets that I really, I really like that one. I've printed it a couple of times now, but they both were from Artie Mays. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Okay, I'm kind of starting to wonder about those stems, whether those are need to be in there or not. They just look kind of chopped off, so I'm going to try it without the stems of the flowers on there. Tearing ruler if I wanted to. Let's try the tear ruler on the bottom part. Another piece of paper up here. So rare. centered on there, I think. I 
I'm just trying some various things on here because I can't quite decide what I want. I just thought instead of two pieces of paper in the background, I just try to have one piece and see how that looked. Still might not be what I want. It's okay. I'll go with that. Okay. Now let's ink around it. I don't know if I can really ink around this or not. Maybe a little bit. mostly brown anyway. If you've liked tuning in and you like my video, I certainly hope that you'll give me a like and also subscribe. That would be great. Okay, put that down. Okay, now I think I've shown you this before where I take the pencil and just draw a very faint line somewhere, the design, so I know where it goes. And then when I put the, the paper back on there, I can um, line it up and just scoot it forward just a little bit to cover over the pencil mark. my pencil mark. So I have a line. I'm going to come up forward just a little bit. I'll check this side to make sure it's like I want it. Okay, and I'll pop it down on there. Okay, and like I said, I'll probably do a few of the little dragonflies on here as well. Sometimes I stamp off Although this stamp off sheet is getting kind of full, I stamp off onto another sheet of paper to test it. And also, if I have any extra ink at the end, then I'll stamp off on it. And then I'll use this at some point in some of my collages. I'll probably end up tearing it up. Too many of these guys. Right. I just keep that paper over to the side of my work area and drag it out every time I want to put something like that on it. 
Let's see if we need some lace on here. I think we do. Maybe just on the top there. the fabric glue three in one or fabric tack whichever you have I think they're both the same pretty much Okay. I usually on my um I use a lot of sentiments on this one I used with brave wings she flies and I thought this one would work pretty good for this color outside the lines so I'm gonna cut it you can cut it or tear it these I just print off on my computer. I just have, um, in my files, I just have typed up lots of them, the ones I commonly use, and then I just print a bunch of them at a time. I keep them in a folder. Actually, I kind of like this over here. I'm going to put that one down right now. And this way. reason I'm using this paper of course is to tie it into the front and have both the papers kind of be the same direction okay and also give this a little bit of Distressing so it doesn't look quite so white. And if you like it that way, that's great. And you can have it that way. Okay, and then you can audition where you want to put the, the saying. I like it on the bottom. Usually the first place you try it is, is where you like it. And I can go back with my pen and trace around the edges I usually turn this around to this way so I know which way I'm going direction I'm going I'm right-handed and I'm going from left to right it's a lot easier okay we finished that one. It's the inside. We can put some uh, some papers in there. I just have a couple pieces of ephemera here that might that you might want to put in here. This could be a um, just to show you. This could be a uh, journal card. This actually is a journal card.
And uh, let's see. There's a couple more. Put in there. Okay. There we have your finished. Made out of two envelopes. And like I said, you can use any size envelopes you want. You can even make the envelopes from scrap it paper if you want. Okay, that's a good it's a good one for a beginner and for a person that has been doing this for a while. What did I do with the other one? There it is. So thanks for joining me today. I wish you all peace of mind. And I hope you come back again. Thank you.